Okay, welcome to Keynote Training Systems. We have some uh, problems to work out from our friend, a friend in Trenton, New Jersey, and I'll just jump right in. This is going to be, uh, you should have seen a graphic of this. If you have not, you can uh, go back and start from the beginning, but how I'm going to work this out is I'm going to take the picture with the problem, then I'm going to solve it, and then go on the next one and so on and so forth. So, just to jump right in. Solve by factoring 5x squared plus 13 minus 6 equals 0. First off, what we have to do is we have to understand the concept of foiling, okay? Foiling is what results in this, okay? so. Just to give you an example, when I say FOIL, I mean F-O-I-L, and we say first, opposite, inside, and last. And what that means is we have FOILed to get this problem. Um, and so in order, I want to just step back and make sure that you truly understand the concept of FOILing first. And then we'll go ahead and we'll solve this. But Let's say I have x minus 3 times x plus 2. All right. Then we're going to first multiply the first two terms, which is the x and the x. So we will get x squared, because x times x is x squared. The opposite, we'll multiply that, and we will get 2x, positive 2x, inside, so first, opposite, inside, last. Um, the inside is negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x, and then the last two terms is negative 3 and negative 2, which is negative 6. So our final answer is going to be x squared minus, minus actually minus x, minus 6. Okay, so we foiled to get that. And I'm not sure if all that got on, so I'll just write it. We got x squared minus x minus 6 was our answer when we foiled x minus 3 and x minus 2. So first, opposite, inside, last is the con concept that I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of. So now, we look at this and we have to think to ourselves, what did we do? How did we foil? What did we foil? in order to get that. And again, I'll write it across the top first. I'll just put OPP for opposite, INS for inside, and L for last. So what do we FOIL in order to come up with this uh, question? All right, so I, what I need to do is I need to look at and play with some numbers a little bit because I'm gonna have two terms in parentheses and let's just say you know what 5x and x let's just say we got that so we have 5x here and then we have x so those are our first two terms if we multiply them we of, of 5x squared will result so that will take care of our first I'll just put an f and we'll say 5x times x all right, so we have our first term. Get that. Now we got to think about an opposite inside that is going to result in, um, how should I say it? We're going to have to think of an opposite and an inside that's going to result. So what I like to do is I kind of like to play with, um, I like to play with the last term. And just, and this is like troubleshooting. There's no quick way or easy way sometimes but this is just troubleshooting and so when I look at this well I'll say if I have a positive 3 negative 2 or negative 2 positive 3 we can get negative 6 so let's just see what works let's try positive 2 and negative 3 right these result in negative 6 but we got to think about our opposite inside so our opposite would be negative 15 X negative 15x and already I know that this is not going to work because because then we're going to get 
uh, opposite negative 15 X inside plus 2 X and the term is going to be negative it's going to wind up being a negative number that is not a negative number so that does not work so why don't we do this we'll change the signs we will make this guy positive and this guy negative and see how that works we've done our first our opposite 5x uh, times 3 is 15x the negative 2 is uh, negative 2 times x is negative 2x now that will result in 13 and actually there's an x there very sorry folks all right 13x and um, this works and so 5x minus 2x is 13x and that's our, our answer and then if we hit the last ones we multiply 2 times negative 2 times 3 then we get negative 6 so first 5x times x gives us 5x squared opposite 5x times 3 and let's just satisfy this all right 15 X and then minus 2 X equals 13 X inside put the I there inside negative 2 times X is negative 2 X so the opposite and the inside the opposite gives us 5x 5x times 3 is 15 X inside negative 2 times X all right and then last we take our last two terms the negative 2 and the 3 and we get negative 6 right but we're not done yet we are not done yet um, so uh oh we erased too much 5x minus 2 and x plus 3 those are our two terms when we factor it down when we foil now since there's a zero there we got to solve for x in both of these situations so um, our answers are negative 2 over 5 and 3 negative 2 over 5 and negative 3 and the last two we could just throw away no no actually no no I just I was looking at it wrong 2 over 5 2 over 5 and we have negative 3 negative 3 and positive 3 all right so what we have to do over here is we have to solve for X and so we split these two up like this we split them up I already see if we go X plus 3 equals 0 then what we need to do is we need to subtract 3 from both sides so x equals negative 3 what I've done is all I do in the good memory you can use this when think about the 3 jumping to the other side of the equal sign and when it jumps to the other side of the equal sign it goes from positive to negative if it was a negative number it would be positive so whenever you jump over just think of this number jumping over and changing its sign so x equals negative 3 so it can only be it can't be a it can't be B I mean it could be a B or C it can't be D because and these two three is positive and clearly that's not our answer so now we look at our 5x minus 2 equals 0 all right we make 2 go to the other side so 5x equals 2 and we divide 5 on both sides and x equals 2 over 5 so answer C is the correct choice um, x is equal to 2 over 5 and x is equal to negative 3 all right Okay, in this one we don't have all of the uh, drop my dry erase. In this one we don't have all the the three factors, so we did not come up with this one by foiling. 
and that's okay. We can still solve this. All right. So in this situation, since we don't have the um, a situation like um, x squared plus x plus a number equals zero, we didn't. We had to foil to come up with this. We didn't have to foil to come up with that um, because. Everything breaks down in factors. Something is multiplied by something in order to come up with this magical, uh, well, I call it magical. It's not really magical, but I just say uh, it's magical. Because they come up, they pull these numbers out of nowhere somehow, but that's why I call it magical. So what we have to do is we have to look at what was multiplied to come up with this. And since it is in that three-stage situation that we had in the other question in uh, 32, um, what was multiplied by what? So I'm going to just play with this and I'm going to say 4 times what could have happened here. And I'm looking and I see uh, x squared and I see maybe negative 2 x. No, it's 8. It's just a regular 8. I'm sorry. So there's no 8 there. And I apologize for that. All right, so our original is 4x squared minus 8, and, and we're looking at what could have been multiplied together. What, what are factors of this? Well, 4 is one factor, and then to me it looks like x squared minus 2 is another factor. So 4 being one factor, and then multiplied by x squared will give us 4 times x squared is 4x squared, and 4 times negative 2 will give us negative 8. So those are the factors. But now what we have to do is we always have to solve for x. So um, in that situation, we have to find out and we have to look at the answers. What could be multiplied um, and it could only be a, which is 2 and negative 2 because if we look at this and what, this, what the answer is suggesting, what's x? squared minus 2. Well, if we put in a positive 2, it's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, which is just going to result in a 2, and 4 times 2 is going to be 8. If we put in a negative 2, we take this out, we put in a negative 2, we're going to get the same result. We're still going to get positive 4 because 2 times 2 is positive 4 minus 2. And that's going to give us a result of 2. So 4 times 2 is still going to equal 8. All right. So we will go with A on that one. And I'm looking at this picture. You already solved it. And that's okay. But that's how we um, derive that answer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kino Training Systems. And today, my, my camera's a little bit off because uh, I've been rearranging some things, but it's fine. We're going to get the information out. Um, scientific notation. Scientific notation is a way for mathematicians and scientists to deal with really, 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 really large numbers. I mean, like, um, let's say we are 93 million miles away from the sun all right so how would we write that we would write that 93 million miles we could say nine three comma one two three comma one two three that's a very large number all right so what happens is scientists they came up uh, or i don't know i forget who created um scientific notation i probably need to do a video about that and um i might i might so what we have to do is we have to look where the decimal place is. The decimal place is here. All right, that's where the decimal place is. And um, I'm always afraid, like, you guys can't see this, but nine, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, decimal place is here. All right, 93 million miles. So now what I need to do when I go to the left, all right, it's gonna be 
we got to look at how many decimal places. So we come over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We always have to come to the furthermost number, right? And we want to park the decimal around, right behind us. So this will be 9.3. I'm dropping stuff, don't worry. 9.3 times, hold on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, times 10 to the 7th. Okay? Don't worry, we're going to do a couple of these, and you will be, um, you will understand. All right. Let's say, and, and you see how much, how much smaller space that takes up. All right, so. Let's do another one. Let's say we are fifty three one two one two three one two three five thousand three hundred and twelve million. All right. So in this case, again. What we would do is we would note where our decimal place is, all right? And we come over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have to come here, all right? We got to leave one number uh, in the ones place. Uh, if we have decimals, when we're con when we're talking about decimals. This is the ones place. Whatever's here ahead of the decimal is the ones. Ones place. The one after this would be the tenths. T E N T H S. The tenths place. So we bring it to the point where the decimal is between the ones and the tenths place. All right. So this would be five. Three one two times. How many times you come over? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times ten to the ninth. Alright, so this is pretty cool how we could take this large number, just collapse it, and then come up with a new form. Alright. Don't worry, I just want to do a couple of these and then we will get to your program. Now, there's another situation. Let's say we have a number like zero point, a small number, 0 0.000004. Well, we have to look at where the decimal is. And again, I'm not even sure you can see that. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4. Alright, let's look at the viewfinder. I gotta get this thing to focus. Sometimes my camera gets a little... There we go. There we go. Alright, so 0 0.000004. That is something very, very small. Alright, so what we could do is we look where the decimal is and we come up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Alright, 6 spaces or places, whatever you want to call it. All right, so that would be 4.0 times 10 to the negative six power. All right, so when we go that way, it's gonna be a negative exponent. When we go, when the decimal goes that way, it's gonna be a positive exponent. Now, none of your questions had um, exponents, but I wanted to just show you both ways of how this thing works if we have small numbers or something, something very large. So, let's look at your question now. And da, 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 da. select the equivalent value, convert from or to scientific notation. All right, so, I could look at this and there can only be one answer and it's the one where the decimal separates the ones and the tenths place. So that's automatic. That automatically just says, okay, I see the answer. It just jumped out at me because your final answer 
as the, let's say this is in the ones place, this is in the tenths place, like say something 1.2. Scientific notation can only look like this. The ones in the tenths place has to be separated by a decimal. And then it could be 10 to whatever. Doesn't matter. Just but the ones in it, the decimal has to separate the ones in the tenths place. So I can look at that and the answer jumps right out at me. But we're gonna work it out anyway. And here we go. 67, comma, 340, comma. Got nine zeros after that. Wow. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, now you might be like, oh man, that looks scary. No, not scary at all. We have to bring the decimal over until it separates the, the ones in the tens place of the new number. So watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Bang, right there. We move 13 spaces. So to me, that is six. 0.7. Remember, the decimal must separate the ones and the tenths place. 3, 4 times 10 to the 13th. That was our answer. I just saw it because there's only 1, 2, 3, the... Actually, no, two of them actually have it. But I could throw away the first one. I could throw away the second answer. I could throw away the third answer. The final answer has to have the decimal uh, splitting the ones and the tenths place. Okay, here's our next question, number 35. Um, 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power. Okay, again, this this question is, um, it's a dead, this answer is a dead giveaway. Whenever we do this, again, if we have a 1.2, this is what the answer is separating the ones place and the tenths place. The decimal is going to be right there. So the answer is 6.022000, however many zeros, but 6 point, this is what you have to focus on, the 6.0, the ones in the tenths place is, um, is, 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 is separated by decimal. The other question was, answer was 6,000 something. That's not it because the decimal's not setting, separating that. Um, they actually did have one, but the number wouldn't be that long. Um, but it's 6.0022. Um, All right. Um, so, yeah, we'll freeze right there. And uh, do number 36, I think, is left. Okay. This one is not a dead giveaway, but it's partial and... When I started talking about scientific notation, I didn't even know that there was one being worked this way. Again, we have 0 0.0000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a fifth 0, and then 5, 2, 7. Again, we have to look at the number of spaces we move. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We separate the ones and the tenths place. So this is 5.27 times 10 to the negative 6. Because we moved 6 spaces, but we went in that direction. Alright. So that's another one. Now, you had two answers that... Um, that, um, what am I trying to say? You had two answers, one, two, that didn't have, you could throw those away anyway. Whenever you, you don't see, when you're expressing something in scientific notation, and you're, it's a multiple choice question, and you don't see a decimal in between the one and the tenths place, just throw that, just throw that away. Just throw that answer away. It's not for you. This is what your final answer is always going to look like. So, um, I hope you guys learned something today. Um, if you have any more uh, questions, just shoot them to me. Um, and thanks for watching. This is Keno Thomas with Keno Training Systems. Bye-bye.